Will you saturate me, saturate my heart, cause I know the flow. Oh, Emmanuel. Will you saturate me, saturate my heart, cause I know the flow. Oh, Emmanuel. Will you saturate me, saturate my heart, cause I know the flow. Oh, Jesus saturates me, saturate my heart, cause I know the flow. Oh, saturate me, saturate my heart, cause I know the flow. Oh, Hallelujah. Can we have our seat? Let's have our seat in God's presence. Father, we bless you for this. We thank you because you are faithful. Thank you because you are gracious. Let your name be praised in the name of Jesus. We ask, O oh God, that you open our eyes of understanding, even to see what you'll be revealing to us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let your name be praised. In Jesus' name we are praying. Hallelujah. Please take note of this. One of the most despisable seasons in the life of a man is in the days of his youth. Are you with me? One of the seasons that is easily to be despised by men is what? Your youthful days. Are you there? And the reason the devil will arrange people to despise your youthful days is because he wants you to misuse your strength. Are you there? When you begin to give heed to those who are despising your youthful days, you are likely to misuse your what? Your strength. Because the Bible says the glory of the youth is where? In their strength. The Bible now told us that let no man despise the days of your what? Of your lead to what? beginning those are the days of your you know your, those that stage is your youthful stage that period when god is just starting something with you and it doesn't look like you are going far are you there you see the moment you allow what people are saying to distract you you misuse your strength are you there your strength is your divine investment. God gave you that strength for the purpose of actualizing his assignment. There's a mandate that God wants you to actualize. Are you getting what I'm saying? There's an assignment that God wants you to do. Are you there? And in order for you to do that which he wants you to do, he gave you what? Strength. Are you there? This strength now will now form the enablement. Are you there? For you to do that which God have what sent you to do. Are you there? Look at this. If you look away from men, you look at God. Are you there? But if you look away from God, you look at men. Are you there? And a distracted man is the one that is looking at men and not God. Are you there? May we never get to that point in our life whereby our focus is on men. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a curse to put your trust in man. Is it what? Is a curse. The Bible says, Woe unto him that puts his trust where? In a man. He's not saying you should not trust man. Are you there? But he's saying what? Putting your trust in man is a sign that you are under a curse. You know what that means? A man that is putting his trust in other men will be dependent on those people. Are you there? Listen to me. 
You see, there's a thin line between wisdom and foolishness. A thin line. Please listen to me now. You must know when to say, you see, now let me tell you something. This may look very strange, but I'm going to bring you into clarity as the Lord helps me. There are times, hmm? there are times, there are situations in life whereby you won't say sorry. Are you there? Yes. Because in such seasons, if you say sorry, you have mocked God. There are times that you are not expected to be apologetic. If you try to tender apology, you have mocked God. I'm going to give you an example. Are you there? If you act rude to an elder, what should you do? Apologize. If you do something wrong, are you there? Whether you are wrong or not, for you to make peace, what should you do? Apologize. But anytime somebody comes to challenge your God, you don't have to apologize. Apologizing in that kind of situation is the same as mocking God. Can I give you an example? Somebody comes to you and says, all right, I'm not going to pay your school fees. But you are calling on God. I mean, now, let that your God now. Let that your God go and pay the school fees. Don't say, ah, please, please. You have mocked God. Are you there? Anytime they challenge your God, it is an error to apologize. Are you there? You stand with boldness. Are you with me? If your God is alive, now let him save you. Don't go and beg and say, sorry, sorry, it's not like that. No. Are you there? Those are times not to be apologetic. Are you getting what I'm saying? Anytime people come to you to challenge your God, it's not a time to apologize. It's a time to what? To be strong and what? And do exploit. Are you with me? But if somebody says, if it's a legal thing, I mean, as far as God is not concerned, please apologize. That's cut. But if God is involved, and somebody is talented, what can your God do? You now say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not like... That's foolishness. The king said, let us cast this man into the fire. Let us see if they are God with what? Did they beg the king? Huh? Many of us, we don't even know how to use sorry. We don't know how to use the weapon called apology. You think it's every time. No. Are you there? It has happened to me before. I shared this maybe in the last 10 hours. We were living in a house then. And then the landlady knew that I'm a man of God. She knew I'm a pastor. And she came to me and said, well, 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 you have to leave. When she said that, I went back and I thought about it. And I got in my spirit that this woman is challenging my God. Are you getting what I'm saying? At that point, we did not even know where we are going to. Are you there? But I came to her and said, now we are going to leave. <laughs> are you with me? I refuse to what? God does not want you to apologize on his behalf. Are you there? There are times to stand boldly and face the storm. There are times of what? If you don't stand boldly before the storm, you cannot rebook the storm. There is no rebook in the mouth of a fearful man. All that a fearful man can do is to beg the storm. And the storms of life does not respond to begging. Are you there? They respond to boldness. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Are you getting what I'm saying? The situations of life does not respond to what? Does not respond to begging. Jesus was sleeping in the boat and then they came to him and said, Master, don't you care that we perish in this place? What did Jesus do? Okay, storm, I'm sorry. We are sorry. We are sorry. If you had no, we would not have come to this angle on the sea. Please, just pardon us for that. Is that what Jesus did? Stood on his ground and what? Spoke to the storm. The storm you beg 
we swallow you up. It is the storm you rebook that you conquer. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is the storm that you rebook that you conquer. The storm you beg will defeat you. Are you with me? That's it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? You must learn when to apologize and when not to what? Apologize. Because every child of God carries God. So when you, when, 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 when you, instead of you speaking to the storm, when you are begging the storm, you are reducing the, the, the potency of God in your life. Are you there? It is wrong for a child of God to say, now I'm helpless. Is it possible? Can you be helpless? Can you be helpless? Even if you get to your house now and they say, there's no space for you here, go away. Will you be helpless? There are some words that must not be heard in your mouth as a child of God. I'm finished. How? Jesus said, it is finished. You, you said what? I am finished. Does it, does it, does it correlate? He did not say, I'm finished. He said what? It is. If anything we finish, it has to be what? It's not a person. It has to be something. Are you there? So the days that the devil comes to you and molests you and defeats you is finished. Are you there? Those are the it that is finished. Are you getting what I'm saying? The days of failures is what? Finished. It's under the it that Jesus finished. But you as a person, you cannot be finished. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because it is finished, I am not what? Finished. Say to yourself. Because it is finished, I am not finished. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let no one despise the days of your what? Little beginning. It may not look like it now, but if you continue, you become it. Are you there? The reason the enemy mocks you is so that you can stop. Are you there? Are you with me? There is something about your life that the devil is afraid of. And that is your consistency. Are you there? If the devil successfully stops you from being consistent, he has defeated you. Are you there? Because victory is in your continuity. Are you with me? It's where? In your continuity. So as we continue, we come into victory. We come into the reality of the victories that Jesus has secured on our behalf. Are you with me? I've not gone to the message. I'm just saying this by the Spirit of God to charge us up. Now look at this. I was ministering on one of my brother's group, um, insurmountable, and then I made a statement. I want to share it with you so that you can be blessed. What is Thanksgiving? Because many of us now, if I ask you one time or the other in your life, you, you believe you have done Thanksgiving. And some of you recently, you think you have done Thanksgiving. But what is Thanksgiving? I did not even know that that terminology until when I was ministering, you know, anytime I'm ministering, once I open my mouth, the Lord began to speak. So I was even learning from those things I was saying. So it was when I began to minister and the Lord began to teach, and I said, okay, this is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is more than thank you, Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? If God gives you something, are you there? And you say, thank you, Jesus. That is the minor part of it. Are you there? You know what Thanksgiving is? Thanksgiving is giving to God what he gave to you. That's Thanksgiving. Are you getting what I'm saying? So Thanksgiving is more of action than words. Are you with me? 
Are you with me? So it's not about, you see, the thanksgiving is not in that thank you, Jesus, that you are saying. It is in your ability to what? To give to him that which he has what? He has given to him. So giving thanks is you giving to God what God, what gave to you. Can I give you an example? For example, if God gives you, maybe God gives you one million naira now. Are you with me? If God gives you one million naira, and God comes to you and says, okay, from this one million naira, give 500,000 to your pastor. Give 100,000 to this person. As you give, from what, as you give by leading, from what God has given to you, what are you doing? You are giving thanks. Are you with me? Now, this thing I'm saying is strange now. <laughs> you know what thanksgiving is? <laughs> giving to God from what he gave to you. Giving what he gave to you, back to him, is thanksgiving. So if he gives me one million naira, and God, the same person that gave me now comes and says, Give 500,000 to that person and I gave it. So I give 100,000 to this person and I gave it. At the end of t- all those things I'm giving is what? What am I doing? Huh? So we give thanks by giving back to God what he has given to us. So a man that has not learned the ways of giving cannot give thanks. He will say it, but he will never act it. And the real job is in what? Acting. Working out your salvation with what? Fear and trembling. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are we together? Oh, I want us to pray a bit. There's something I want to share with you somehow. It's not milk, it's meat. I want us to pray so that we can come into it. Can we just pray in the Holy Ghost? Help me, help me Jesus to receive. Shabala kobarida banata barida. spirit to receive from my spirit to my soul until my voice be echo you are worthy of my worship worthy of my praise from my spirit to my soul until my voice be echo you are worthy of my worship Lord. now can we sing together from my spirit to my soul, until my voice be echoes, you are worthy of my worship. Worthy. From my spirit, from my spirit to my soul, until my voice be echoes, you are worthy of my worship. Worthy. From my spirit, from my spirit to my soul, until my voice we echo, you are worthy of my voice. <laughs> Sing and open up your spirit. Ale 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 From my spirit to my soul until my voice we echo. You are worthy. Oh, worthy. From my spirit, oh Jesus. 
No, 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 no. You are already preparing yourself now. Oh. Now look at this. You see, we have to prepare our hearts to receive. I've come to discover that it is not everything you hear. Now look at this. It is not mandatory that you understand what you hear. Are you there? Should we do practical? Have you not discovered that there are some things I teach when you come to meetings and you don't understand? But you hear. You wrote it. Now you are now you are going home thinking, trusting God for interpretation to it. So it therefore means that hearing does not mean you have understanding. You know when understanding comes. It is only the things that are given to you that you understand. So if I see 20 things and only one thing is given to you, that's the only thing you understand. So this is why our heart must be rightly postured before God. So that as we hear, those things that we hear will be what? Given to us. Can we pray in the Holy Ghost again? Just charge up your spirit so that you can receive. so that we can move fast in this teaching. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. Somebody should be there. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Amen. Genesis chapter what? 127. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. Genesis chapter 2, verse 19. Genesis chapter 2, verse 20. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. Hallelujah. So if we are able to stay on that place, on that, um, on that verse, it's going to help us to move fast in this teaching. Are we together? I, I, I run to you. I, I, I run to you. I run to you. I, I run to you. I run to you. I run to you. 
Jesus. Jesus, I run to you. Hallelujah. I'm going to be speaking by the Spirit of God on the topic and title, The Headworm and the Head. The Headworm and the what? And the Head. It looks scientific, but it's spiritual. The Headworm and the what? And the Head. Praise the Lord. I'm going to be looking at the origin of what we call sickness. Where does it come from? The origin of sickness. Where does sickness come from? Hallelujah. Jesus, help us today. 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 Now, let's read the first verse. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. Yes? Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. Yes? Yes? Now, God created man, yes? Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Genesis 2, verse 7, yes? And the Lord God did what? Formed man, yes? Yes. Now, look at that. The Lord God formed what? Man from what? The dust. Now let me ask you this question. The judgment for the sin of man, where does the judgment start from? Does it start after they had the fruit in the garden and God placed a pronouncement? Where does the judgment start from? The judgment for their sin started from the formation of man. Follow me carefully. The judgment for the sins of man started from where? From the formation of man. For the fact that you are formed from the dust, you are already judged. And I'm going to show you the implication. Are you there? For the fact that you are taken, you are formed from the head, you are already what? Judged. So why will God judge them? Why is creating them? Because he had already seen a head. That was why even the lamb that was slain was slain from where? The foundations of the world. <laughs> are you with me? Because man was made from head. There, were, there are certain things that are attached to that creation, that formation. Where does this head one now come from? Because man was made from the head, man is like a soil. Are you there? Where will you find head one? Huh? In the soil. Are you, are you with me? Because man was made from head, there are certain things that will be permitted to function in a man naturally by default. So the one that is made from head will function with, you see, the head is the legal office of the head one. So now when I begin to say head one, don't see the one crawling on the, are you getting what I'm saying? There's more Meaning to it. Because the earthworm must what? Feed and live where? In the head. Are you with me? So sickness became the natural part of what? Of the man. Are you with me? Because of his composition. Head. Are you with me? You see, when, when Jesus, are you with me now? Jesus said, John 3, 16, the Bible says, Whosoever believeth on him should not what? Perish, but have what? But have everlasting what? Life. The everlasting life there is the eternal life. Are you with me? Are you with me? Um, 
can we hold on on the sound and then let's play his floating sound from the hallelujah I want us to really focus and concentrate now listen to this where is the natural dwelling place of the headworm where the soil so the one that is made from the soil is soil. Are you there? So the worm can naturally what? Live in the soil. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why it is natural for men to be tired. Are you with me? Men can be weak because of their composition. Are you with me? Now look at this. When eternal life comes into you, what happens? What happens? What eternal life does is that it, eternal life changes your composition from head element to spiritual element. Are you getting what I'm saying? Eternal life changes what? Your composition from what? Heathly element to what? Spiritual element. The moment that life is diffused into you, is connected into you, that worm now that functions legally in the head, are you there, the soil, will now become what? Prohibited from functioning in you because the element has now what? Changed. Are you following me? Are you following me now? What I'm now trying to say is this. The one that has eternal life and that has interacted with that life so much by obedience will not be subjected to the natural limitations of man, though he is a man. Because the composition has now changed. Are you with me? If sickness is natural, if God wants us to be sick, then why will Jesus heal the sick? It would have been a contradiction to the law of God for Jesus to heal the sick. Are you with me? Every sickness is of the devil. Are you there? These are things you must understand. Now look at this. There are some people now they have there's something they, they are battling with. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a sign that the head worm is still weird in the head. Are you there? That's the function of that worm that I'm talking about. Now, this worm now can now be pain, it can be sickness, it can be diseases. Are you with me? When Jesus came, Jesus modeled the picture of a perfect man. There was no time where the Bible told us that Jesus was sick and he almost died, but God healed him. Did you see anything like that? Are you there? If you don't know that a thing is abnormal, you may continue to see it as what? As normal. And anything you see as normal will stay. Anything you see as normal will what? Are you with me? Is sickness normal? Should you be sick? Huh? Are we together? Please follow me carefully. Let's go to Genesis. <laughs> Let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. We're going to read that now, but hold on. Listen to me. I told you that the judgment of man began from where? The formation of man. So God knew that man will fall. So the judgment started from the formation. That was why the Bible says Jesus, when he found himself in the fashion of man, what did he do? He humbled himself. Aye! This disadvantaged nation. Okay, let me humble myself. Are you there? So you are in the fashion of man, you are doing like this. You lack what? Wisdom. When you see, may the Lord help us. Let me give you an example. If God employs, look at the way God functions with you. God, Jesus, was 
sacrificed, not in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He, he, Jesus actually died before the earth was formed. That's what the Bible is trying to say. Are you there? By saying the lamb was slain from the foundation of the earth. Meaning that God already knew that what? Man will fall. So he made the provision even before the fall. Are you with me? This is how God relates with the man. If God employs somebody now, God can say, okay, your salary for this employment, what you will get on a monthly basis is one million naira. Ah, thank God, I'm rich. Then you resume. At the end of the first month, then God will now pay 500,000 to your account. You may think in the next month, you will now continue to pay 500,000, 500,000. Do you know why? Because he had seen your future. He knows that in the next six years, you are going to steal 36 million from the company. So he has started saving that thing. So what you think you stole is actually your <laughs> is the accumulation. <laughs> Are we together? So the man will say, I'm a big man. No, he has nothing to do with the fact. If you, if you calculate, calculate that to six years, you see 36 million. So that means we cannot cheat God. That's what I'm trying to say. Are you there? He knows the hand from what? From the people. So when God was forming man, there was judgment factored into the formation. That was why man was made with God. So the judgment for the fall of man started from the formation of man. Are you there? And you see, the Adam that you saw in the Garden of Eden was a container. Let's go to Genesis. Now we are ascending. Genesis 2 7. Please read. Read what it says. And the Lord God formed man. The Lord God formed man, yes. From the dust of the ground. Yes. And heated into his nostrils. Yes. The breath of life. Okay, now let's go to verse 15. And the Lord God, and the Lord God took the man. And the Lord God took the man. And put him into the garden of Eden. The Lord God took the man and put him where? Into the garden of Eden. Please pay attention. God took the man and what? I'm putting where? The Lord, now, you see, Adam is a container. Are you there what I'm saying? Are you with me? So when God put the man, that hefty man, eh, that one that was disadvantaged, eh, when God picked that man, where did he put him? In the garden. Meaning, God put the man in the container called what? Adam. Follow me carefully. Are you with me? Let's go to verse uh, 19. Verse 16. Have you read verse 16? Yes. And the Lord God commanded the man. Yes. Saying, Yes. Every tree of that tree yes. thou may freely eat. Yes. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, yes. thou shalt not eat of it. Mm-hmm. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, the day you eat, yes. thou shalt surely die. Praise the Lord. The Lord now commanded the man. The day that you eat of this thing, you will what? Now, that content, God was not speaking to the content. Are you there? The day you eat, you can eat everything here, but what? So that means that the Adam you saw in the garden is actually many generations that is working in the garden. Because God put the man that was empty in Adam. Are you with me? Are you with me? Let's go to what verse are we going to now? 16. Have we read 16? Huh? Let's go to 18, yes. And the Lord God said, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. That what the man should be alone, yes. I will make him an earth meet for him. Yes. And out of the ground, yes. The Lord God formed every beast of the field. Yes. And every power of the Now look earth. at this. Adam in the garden of Eden was spirit. Are you there? 
So the common weakness that is common to man was not in him because he was spirit. That was why the you see the food for spirit is not a and rice. The food for spirit is knowledge, is light. So that was why God subjected them to the tree. Because each of the tree in the garden represents a certain knowledge of God. Are you with me? So what you are, are you with me? Now I want to ask you a question. Do you know that if you came here hungry now, no matter how powerful the teaching is, the hunger will still be there. Except if glory now covers you. And you don't remember you are hungry, but when you get to eating with you, it will mean that though you are eating a particular food, but the food you just ate from the word of God is not for your stomach. It's for another part of you that is pleasing. Hmm? Because if it is for your stomach, you will not be hungry. So you can come with hunger and God will feel it and yet you will not know because you are a carnal man. Because a carnal man focuses on the stomach, not the spirit. He first feels his stomach before giving attention to the spirit of the carnal man. So he will not come to fellowship. Have you not heard people say, Sir, I would have come, but I'm very young. I get that. He won't come to fellowship. Because he wants to what? Feel Are you with me? So the Adam in the garden was a what? A spirit. Are you with what I'm saying? Now, let's move a bit. The Lord now told us that at a point, the Lord caused a great sleep to fall upon him. Adam. Are you there? And when, meaning that, you see, a spirit does not sleep. Are you there? They don't sleep. But, for Adam to sleep, God had to induce it. Because it is not natural for that, that nature, that being to sleep. So God induced it. Now that was the first and the last time that we heard that was Adam was sleep. Because his spirit did not sleep. His spirit does not sleep. I cannot sleep. So when he slept, what did God do? God now removed the man.
खाना जी बनने का Look at this when if ate the fruit what happened When if ate the fruit what happened Then it happened Not enough The real effect of eating the fruit took place when who when Adam did what Are you with me? Oh my god. Are we together? Oh. I'm even scared to continue this revelation now. Okay, I told you that God now removed the man, right? But if this man that was removed is not the same from where she was removed from. So this one that was removed now was called the woman. Are you getting what I'm saying? But both of them are not the same. So there are some things that are realities to this one that may not be reality. Now look at this. A man that is healthy. Eh? There are things that will be that have become a desire to that man. But the one that is spiritual, those things that, that can be a desire to the one that is healthy will not be a reality to the one that is spiritual. You discover that there was no sex in the garden. Male and female, but no, do you know why? Even when that thing is a reality to the one that is healthy, the one that is a spirit does not understand. I get what I'm saying. Look at these two pictures. Eve now says, Adam, please now, let us. And Adam is trying to just understand. I don't get it. It's not, it's not like, she, are you there? It's not factored in that. Are you getting what I'm saying? When Eve fell, she became more. Subtle. Genesis 31 and the serpent was what? More subtle than what every other beast on the world. Huh? When Adam fell, it became subtle. So by the fall, the woman came into the place of where? Huh? Huh? The serpent. And the man came to where? The place of the woman. So the man became empty. And the woman became more subtle. That's why I said I don't want to share So, what the woman knew before that Adam did not know, now Adam now knew. And the woman now knew more. Because she's now more subtle. Oh my God. <laughs> are we. <laughs> I, I just hope we are still in this bus now. Can we, can we keep driving? Hello? If you can be deceived, it means you can deceive. Are you catching what I'm saying? If you can be deceived, what does it mean? It means you can be deceived. If, if you can what? Be deceived, it means you can deceive. Are you with me? The one that cannot deceive cannot be deceived. God cannot deceive, so it cannot be deceived. Any sin that people successfully do to you is what you have the tendency of doing. You understand what I'm saying? Oh my God. Oh. If you can be deceived, it means you can what? As somebody lied to you, it was successful. It means the tendency to lie is The moment the tendency dies, you come into light. So nobody can now lie to you again. If somebody can still deceive you now, it means you have the tendency to deceive. So any sin people successfully do to you is what you have the tendency of doing. 
They rape you, you too, you can. They steal something from you successfully, it means you can do it. This is the thing I'm doing like this. But do you understand what I'm saying? Now let's go back to the guy. The one that is deceived can be what? Can deceive. So it means the hetty man, the one that is hetty, have the tendency of carrying out deception. So what the devil came to throw at the woman is not new. He did not invent it. He just obeyed a principle. So she can deceive both you. And she was So you remember I told you that the man now came to the place of the woman and the woman came to the place of the serpent. So she became more subtle, the man became subtle. So the man became a are you with me? Suddenly, they now press them. Suddenly, they now saw that they were what? Huh? Because there's a change of level now. Huh? Can I tell you something? The moment the permission the woman has to eat from the tree in the garden was from the man. The reason the woman could eat from the tree, oh God, okay. Can we, can we do it in this way? Can we, can we do that? Let's enter into that place by revelation. Are you there? Who is actually eating from the garden? It's Adam that's eating from this. So how did Eve now survive? Eve will now survive from the feedback that she gets from who? From him. And that's the mystery of leadership. The man that has not heard God should not speak to men because he has nothing to say. Whatever you say to men must be the feedback you are getting from him. That was why the woman was eager to at least let me eat. Let me, I, this thing that Adam is not doing, let me, I get what I'm saying. Are you with me? <laughs> Follow me, sir. So Adam will eat and give people. And she fed on the people. She was great. But when they fell, I told you the position they came into. Are you with me? In that position, their eyes were now open. And the first thing they saw is what? They are naked. Now, a man that is hetty, please note, anytime I use the word hetty, I'm talking about carnal. Are you there? A carnal man we always see is what? Nakedness. So that's why his declaration will not be faith based, it will be sight based. So the day there's no money in his account, he will say, I'm finished. Because he is seeing that he is what? He's naked. Are you with me? The declaration of a carnal man is what? It's not faith based, it's sight based. So the day there's no money in his pocket, you hear him say, I'm dry, I'm dry. I get out of it. Anytime you say something negative to yourself, it is a sign that you have seen what God does not expect you to see. How do you know that you are naked? That's what God asks them. Most of the times when we come to a wrong conclusion about our life, the question God is asking from heaven is, how do you know that you are naked? Oh, my life is finished now. How do you know? Who told you?
And then, hello? If you want to stop eating from the tree of life, start eating from the tree of death. The first bite is the last bite. The moment you start eating from the tree of death, you have stopped eating from the tree of life. Your first bite of the forbidden fruit is equal to your last bite of the fruit of death. So the day they tasted the forbidden fruit was the last fruit they tasted the fruit of death. Are you getting what I'm saying? That was the last. The next thing they saw they were naked. God said, Who told you? And then suddenly they, be, they began to what? Push blame. It is the what? The woman you get. This edge. Are you getting what I'm saying? Then the next person, the next person said, It is what? Characteristics of the one that is hurt is that he does not know how to take responsibility. Even for his life, he will take responsibility. If not for my parents, I will not send me to school. I know where I should be now. No responsibility. I will not have this exam if they pay my fee heavy. No responsibility. There's no point of saying, I know I am wrong. I'll do it well. No, no. Somebody is responsible for something. I will not be here if not for my brother discipline. When will you what? Take the responsibility. Respons- taking responsibility begins with when you begin to what? See yourself as the cause of your shortcoming. I know I'm not consistent. It's my fault. There's something I should do that I'm not doing. So I take responsibility. Until you take responsibility, you cannot take possession of your life. You will know it is your right for you to be angry. And many of us are not growing because we keep shifting it. Because we are hurt. We are what? We are kind of people. Are you with me? Are you getting what I'm saying? Tell your neighbor, say, take responsibility. Take responsibility. That is leadership. You cannot get instruction from your leader if you are not submitted to leader. So how he lived in the garden was Submission. You were not there. The spirit of the Lord that was there now told you in the scripture that the woman should submit, you servants should submit to their head. It's pointing to what they saw in the garden that you did not see. Adam hates the food. And yet, if he's being refreshed by what? The one that is deceived can work. Anything you cannot cannot be successfully done. Because, because you cannot do it, you are conquered that. Let me give you a sign. The moment the tendency to lie dies in you, nobody will be able to lie to you. Because as they are lying, Okay, 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 okay. They have the money to now explain to you. Are you there? So the next step, don't say, Why did you lie to me? Think and say, Ah, when did you send this? Because it has to be an attraction. That thing finds something in you 
that is similar. That was why you fell into it. If he does not find anything in you similar, you cannot work. So the woman that was The head one and the head. As long as the head one is in the head, they will be blood. They will be covered. The reason people fall sick is because the head one is still where? Is still in the head. The head one will need to live in the soul. You are the soul. God can plant his seed in you because you are the soul. The earth one can also what? live in you because you are the soul. The day you will be delivered from the hold of the earth one is the day that you come in contact with the And you know that you have it. And you begin to interact with it. That is when you will be free. Because if the earth one will eat you up, also is a sign that the earth one is still in your hands. When the earth one moves to your head, you begin to have head, you begin to have mind. When it comes to your leg, you begin to have leg pain, elementals, all those things. But when the eternal life of God comes into you and you are aware of it, you move from being an earthly element to become a spiritual element. The earth one dies naturally in that place. It cannot survive that thing. But as long as you are still healthy, the earth one will feed on you. Are you with me? Get sick and begin to think it is normal. Well, I'm sick. Is it not because I'm sick? There are some things that is normal for men. When you get to heaven, God will ask you, Why are you sick? When people call me and they say I'm sick, I, 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 I try to not believe. That's what I, I just try to move along. Because so that they won't say, I'm this man, I'm not this man. Yeah. Just, okay, yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I still don't believe how <laughs> What you believe becomes the reality you see in your life. Are you there? If you see a thing as normal, it becomes part of you. Are you there? If you see it as abnormal, you become empowered to live above it. Are you there? The Lord gave me a powerful statement some years ago, he said, a sick body should not serve. And a serving body should not be what? So if you are serving and you are still sick, it is not normal. Because any time you are sick, your effectiveness in service will be useless. It's what? And as long as the earth one is still in your head, ah, there's nothing that you don't see in your body. You can feel pain here today. You feel under one chip. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Whatever is not of God must not find an expression in your body. Are you with me? Are you with me? Every part of your body is expected to function well. Are you there? Don't see abnormal as what? As normal. As a matter of fact, you are not normal if to you everything that is abnormal looks what? Normal. You are not normal. That's it. Do you believe Jesus is our perfect example? Huh? What Jesus modeled is what your life should model. I don't believe I can be sick. 
But I believe I can be tired. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's it. I believe I can be tired. I mean, just have to rest and rest and rest and regain myself again. And... But I don't believe. What, what, who am I looking at? Is who? That's why the Bible says, look unto who? Jesus. The what? The author and Jesus. So why am I telling you this? Any time, look at this. There is no sickness that comes to you without a permission from you. No. Not one. Not one. Are you there? The permission, when granted, Make sickness a reality in your life. Because you have to sign the document. You see, spiritual realm operates on legality. Are you there? There are laws you have to sign. So when you sign, it becomes your reality. Can I give you an example? As you are seated now, you may begin to feel like your body is getting tired. And suddenly, you may start saying, telling yourself, ah, it's like, a, it's like, I'm having, how many of you have had that case, something like that before? And you, you, you are feeling somehow, and you said it, ah, this is malaria, oh. this is malaria sign, oh. And when you said it, that day or the next day, you now have the malaria. The permission is the symptom. If you say it, you come into it. So at the point when you are feeling someone tell yourself, I cannot, be. it's not possible. You know the numbers of things I fight? I fight a lot of things. When you see me talking sometimes, you think you, if you are there, you just wonder, you just pray for me and say, Lord, please, sustain it. I fight it. Like I, I'm, I fight it like I'm seeing somebody standing beside me. Say, no, it's not, it's not possible. I can't, no, never, never. How, how, how? And I'm, the moment you confess it, you come into it. The way my eyes is doing like this. <laughs> is this not Apollo like this? You, it's, it's, it's. The moment you say it, you see it. The moment you what? You see it, you see it. Ha. The way I'm exposing my eyes to life like this, a time we come here. This, this light will just make me go black. Now, you are. You start working on that part. The Lord will help us. So you are not expected to be what? If you have questions, please ask. So that we can go into reflection. Do we have any questions? All right. Yes, please. You can give him the mic. Please, if you have questions, ask. This topic is a delicate topic. Yes? Praise God. Hallelujah. Since Adam and Eve were both in the Garden of Eden, they believe Adam, the Adam, the spiritual from Adam, wherein Adam was kept and made man. Since he will not find expression in this earth, he found expression in the Garden of Eden. So since the woman was also with him in the Garden of Eden, why should something? Thank you. Praise the Lord. There's only one way through which a spirit can sing. One. Are you there? A spirit don't have sexual appetite. So if you like, strip yourself naked, you're just there. Old knife, try to cut them, you cut yourself. Because as you are moving closer, everything will just look like air. You can pass through them. Are you there? The only way through which a spirit can sin is lost. Lost. Lucifer lost it in heaven. And he was lost. If lost it in the garden, both she and her husband were lost. The one that is given to lost, always enjoying lost, will soon be lost. Are you there? Only the mercy of God will find such a person. So it was, it, that is lost. And that's the only thing that the spirit can, because even spirits have their will. Angels have their will. They can choose to rebel. 
And that was why Lucifer rebelled. Are you with me? That's it. Any other question? Yes, there's a question here. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Now the question is, a, a, a baby that is one year old or two years old, and then the, you, you, you hear that she has lung cancer. The question is, how did she have it? How? If you have not, you see, sickness comes by your permission. Whether you are a day old baby or whatever, sickness will come by your permission. Do you know how? Do you know why? Look at me. Look at me. Your spirit is not growing in height, in size, in length. You are the one that is increasing in height. The newborn baby, the spirit of that newborn baby has already attained the full height. It's the baby that is just growing in height. Hey, this baby is growing fat. The spirit is not increasing. But you can feed the spirit. That feeding the spirit does not make the spirit increase in height or length. Are you there? So that's, that's, that, that's why when you give birth, there are things you do to your child by the spirit. There are some atmosphere, environment you create around your child by the spirit that edu- you see, when you give birth to a child, you begin to educate the spirit of a child. You just give birth to a child today. Don't let your neighbor come and begin to give name to your child before you give name to the child. Ah, <laughs> Jalingo, And then the father too will say, ah, Jalingo. <laughs> what education have you given to the spirit of the child? Are you getting what I'm saying? It's, it's knowledge. Even when you know the state of the spirit, you can educate the spirit. And by educating the spirit, the spirit will not be vulnerable to attacks. But a spirit that is not educated, we absorb anything. So they can launch an attack. You see that a baby of six months old is now having breast cancer, if there's anything like that. Or maybe chest cancer. Or tongue, whatever. Jaundice. How? How? Are you getting what I'm saying? Moses was a baby. Are you with me? And the mother was scared. Put he, she placed him in a basket. Put him on the river so that at least she cannot watch her baby die. If you fall in the river and fish eat you, at least I'm not looking at you. It's better than for you to die here. For me to be looking at you and these people will come and take you and cut off your head. And yet, even on the river, somebody from the palace found him education. The spirit of the river could not take him because his mother, a Levite, had educated his spirit. Moses was in the palace. King Pharaoh, you know, do you know what it means to live in the palace? He grew in the palace, eating what he wanted, living as a prince. Yet, he got to a point. He said, I don't belong here. My people are the Israelites who taught him. Their mother educated him. How do I know? When the queen came and saw the basket, she now said, which nurse can we now call to nurse this baby? Miriam, who is also of the same family, said, I know a nurse. Now went, she now went to call the mother of Moses. So the mother will now come to the palace in the morning, or maybe go in the evening, or whatever the shift is. But as the mother is giving milk to Moses, Kalu Kaba, you don't belong. Ikaliasa, Mento Kalu. And at the at the end of the month, they will still pay the mother salary. The mother will the, the mother will okay. The nanny is here now. This is the baby. Okay, okay. Let me take it to the room now. You don't belong. Began to speak word to the baby. He grew in pleasure 
in abundance, yet he was ready to be afflicted. Somebody taught him something. You that you are never educating your own spirit, how will you? This thing we just taught you now about sickness. Now there are some of you. The moment you step there, you will fight it till you get to the house. It's not possible. There are people that are sick. I even know a pastor that is sick. <laughs> And you begin to fight it in your heart. Well, I, 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 I'm not saying the man of God is lying, but at, at least I know more than two pastors that are sick. <laughs> you don't know the devil is playing on your on your intelligence. To whose loss? You believe the truth, you save your life. You ignore the truth, you die. That's it. That's it. If you are sick now, can you do more for God? Maybe here now you just say, okay, 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 where's Pasale? Okay, okay. You know, they just want him to get there now. He's trying to. And then we now hand the fellowship pipe. Everybody now came to. Sorry, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody touched by that. Ah, you already told me that. <laughs> what glory is there? That thing that will come and meet you after fellowship and begin to fight this thing, you better fight this thing. <laughs> Educate your what? Your spirit. So that as your spirit is willing, even your flesh will also what? Be willing. If your flesh is weak, it will conquer the willingness of your spirit. Because even the weakness of the flesh is strength. The strength, the flesh is strong when the flesh is weak. Are you with me? Are you with me? If the Bible says the flesh is weak, what does it mean? It means the flesh is what? It's strong. The flesh is weak means that it will make you weak. It will create a weak point in your life. But for the fact that that thing has created a weak point in your life, what does it mean? That thing is what? Strong. When you successfully educate your spirit, your body will be preserved. The preservation of your body is in the amount of light that your spirit receives. Are you with me? There's so much lesson to learn from the mother of Moses. If she will carry the child, I begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Shaka balata. This one. You can't stay here for long. You can't. No. No. Begin to, she will begin to declare, you are a deliverer. You are a de- Everything she said happened to Moses. He was a stammerer, yet he came into that ordination. The man that God spoke to, face to face. Nobody had that testimony from that time till the Bible. The man that died and God took him and go and bury him. So, the Israelite, I won't let you see. Do you know why? Because if they if they know if they bury him themselves, that grave will become. They will build a temple around that grave, and they will begin to worship Moses like a god. So God buried him by himself. Tell your neighbor, educate your spirit. And preserve your body. Are you with me? Why do I believe I cannot be sick? Education, the spiritual education. My spirit cannot come to see that. So my body is preserved. Can I be, can I be tired? Yes. Can I be weak if I do so many work? Of course, yes. I may need to rest for days. To recover strength where I cannot be sick. I don't believe it. Yes, any question? Yes, there's another one there, please. Let's. They cannot do without falling sick. Praise the Lord. Can you hear that phrase? They cannot what? Yes. So that means for them now, they, they seek without season. 
Meanwhile, the Bible says you what? Pray without ceasing. But some people are now what? Seeking. I don't know if there's any grammar like that. They are falling sick without what? Ceasing. Yes. SSP. SSP. Praise the Lord. Thank you. That's sickle cell anemia. Praise the Lord. Those that are born like that, praise the Lord. Why must I give birth to a child that is SS? Are you with me? Why? Are you with me? You see, the way spirit will judge something is not the way men will judge it. So it's because this baby I gave birth to is SS. Then they will ask you, why must you give birth to SS? And you are wondering, is it my fault? It's your fault. The baby stayed in your stomach for nine months, for God's sake. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you? What are you? What are you doing? So up to the nine months now, you are just moving around with big tummy. Have you? Have you? Have you done, have you done like that? And be pacing like that on daily basis, even if it is just ten minutes. This one, this one, this one. But all with this. He <laughs> said, "What? You just need to see right, so. My, 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 my. <laughs> you had my man. After one hour. <laughs> what again? Oh, what are you for? You are no longer washing clothes. You are no longer cooking. All you do is just to sleep and to wake. Sleep, wake, watch movies." <laughs> you know to shelling. Cook, cook. <laughs> Many of you know people like that. And after cook, you say, this cook is dry. You know to fair ever, ever. You live like that for nine months. You can give back to anything, no? <laughs> Any, anything. Granite stone, <laughs> feeding bottle, bottle water, Gary, a rubber of <laughs> Have you seen the way the devil is keeping things in people? He can keep, some people can give it a bottle. <laughs> Have you not seen these things before? Lizard, anything. The devil is so free that he can even say, okay, 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 okay. let me even keep MP there. <laughs> and then after nine months, he give birth to MP. I just hope it's working at least. He's in it too. Are you with me? Are you with me? Anytime there is a manipulation, somebody open the door. It can even be in a Christian home. I know some of you have examples of Christian homes, and yes, something happened. There is a manipulation there. The devil has no power when we are united. Never. He doesn't have power there. What are you doing for nine months? Now give birth to one. The baby is not like this. <laughs> How? How? What are you doing? Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't you know that you can be pregnant and still impregnate the child in your womb? So even the child that you are giving birth to is pregnant. At the age of four, you just notice this boy is different in class. Seven is already preaching. Ten is winning souls. That's a baby that was born pregnant. If you really, if you have really done well, your baby must come out what? Pregnant. That is a sign to show that you are a good mother. I cannot be bringing my child to the altar on daily basis. And yet the devil will slaughter. No. If I come to the altar, the devil cannot slaughter. If I come to the altar, the devil cannot alter. No. He can alter, he cannot slaughter. I'm on the altar. So the pregnancy period is now. <laughs> the devil comes by so spirit is lame. The woman, Tom is like this. Spirit is lame. There will be no demonic manipulation until somebody gives way for it. I tell you the truth in the Holy Ghost. Even if it is me, I must have given what? Wait. And go for it. Are you with me? 
I'm teaching you because most of us here are females. A time will come, you start becoming a mother. You will know that it's beyond the tummy. The tummy must come to where? The altar. The altar. That is where the devil can slaughter a lot of people. He can alter their destinies because they are far away from what? The altar. Any other question? Wait, wait, can we pray in the Holy Ghost for two minutes? This, this place is charged already. I will not be far from the altar. No, no, no. I can no no. I will not be far. I will not be far from the altar. Shabale Raise your voice. Rabinahota Brehida. Ramba Baba Baribando Sika Baliata. Era Penekopa. Shabababarapapaletaba. I will not be far from the altar. Kia no makoba shatelala. Riba baba bale barona. Ravana koma to sibariata. Kerua 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 kerua. Raba bariba raba 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 lapa. Jesus, now we are praying. Rise to your feet. Please note your question. I'm going to answer them. Rise to your feet. When Mary entered into the house of Elizabeth, both of them were pregnant. When Mary entered into the house of Elizabeth, what happened to Elizabeth? The baby, the moment Mary salute, the moment she heard the salutation, the baby in the belly of what? Of Elizabeth lived. Okay, we agree that Jesus came by the Holy Ghost. Is it, is it, John the Baptist in the tummy, did, did he come by the seed of the Holy Ghost? Yet, something happened. It will mean that John had been impregnated even before he came out. Lord, I will not be far from the altar. From today, I commit myself to the altar. Yes, to the altar, to the altar, to the altar. If your destiny will not be altered, you must not be far from the altar. If you will not be slaughtered, you must not be far from the altar. Pray like somebody that means I will not be far from the altar. Shabala bara bara de to kaba. Ambre komananto si balate. Yerelelelelelelele. Mara oh my God, are you praying at all? Shabala bara bara. Ika kopa rati akaba. Raise your voice. Raise your voice. Jesus, know we are praying. Let me tell you something. The period of pregnancy. Let me tell you something. If you are a lady and maybe you are fighting a battle of maybe forty percent, when you get pregnant, the battle becomes hundred percent. Ask those who are pregnant. Most of the dreams they have is usually terrible dreams. Have you? Can, do I have a witness here? Usually terrible dreams. And it has got it to a point that most women now see it as a normal thing. When you are pregnant, it's normal to have to. Who told you? Who told you? You are far from the altar. And those things you are seeing is a sign that you will soon be slaughtered. Because the ones that are fighting you are consistently on the altar. You that, you are fight, you that they are fighting, you are away from the altar. You will be the first victim. The one that stays on the altar is the predator. The one that is not on the altar is the prey. The predator feeds on the prey. It's not, I'm sorry, have mercy on me. Who told you? Hello? Your begging will not deliver you. Listen to me. Imagine you have raised chickens. Maybe three. Now, December period. December 25, early in the morning. Then I say, please. Can you save them? When you have bought your pepper, your... It will not save. Can you cry? I will not be far. That's the that's lamentation. That's the lamentation. I know you are brilliant. I know you are intelligent. 
But if you are far from the altar, you will be slaughtered. You die before your time. I will not be far. Oh my God! Kekabaradama, shakoko pariyadaba, yedededededededededo, ika koka toleko, parwa, yakwa kwa kwa, yedededededededo, ika koka pariyama, iketekete, yedededededo, iyakwa ta parada, ikota paruda. Is somebody praying? Are you praying? Are you praying at all? Iroato kabaria, shabala bara 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 to. Iye da 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 da. Iye 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 da 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 da. It will be easy for your seed to come into their ordination early in life when you bring the pregnancy to the altar consistently. Many times when they come out, they first waste. They now begin to labor. They now come into it. If we do what we are supposed to do with the pregnancy, the child from the point of birth will move into its ordination. We have examples in the Bible. The Bible did not tell us that there was a time that Jesus was wayward. And then somebody preached to him. And Jesus encountered God. And when he encountered... Do you know those periods of wasting in the world, your life is wasting away? Do you know you are counting, but you are wasting? Those periods you spend in the world before you came to Christ, you are wasting away. If somebody had brought you to the altar while you are still in the stomach, those years will be saved. Will you see allow your own fruit also to waste before they come to the office? Pray. Say, I will not be far from the altar. That's the cry. That's the cry. I will not be far from the altar. Baramino Pamira Madaba. Shambaram Bakuna Lanka Piranda. Pray. I will not be far from God. I will not be far in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Some people, when they give birth, the devil, when they are pregnant, the devil can just, because their pregnancy is just like balloon. So the devil can just take a pin, a tiny pin, and just pinch it and everything. Will, so they say they have miscarriage. How? If you are bringing that thing to the altar, even if the devil comes with pin, it's not a, it cannot enter. Because the, that pregnancy is like a rock. Can you penetrate into a rock with a pin? The first thing, miscarriage is first cancelled because the altar that you are interacting with has now had an impact on the pregnancy. You cannot miscarry it. It's not possible. I will not be far from the altar. That's the lamentation from the Spirit of God. I will not be far. 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 Help me, Jesus. I will not be far. Rabbi Nahataba. Are you praying? Are you praying? Brothers and sisters, are you praying? I will not be far. I will not be far. Yarama, Tekoma, Lekuba Ruda, Esseberuda, Verenda Benetua Kaban, Arua, Rua, 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 Tekeberunda Baba, Sabila Bila Baba, Baruda Babala, Iriaco, Kuberu Kabala, Luakaba, Asha Baba Banta, Merua, Merua, Meruata, Meruata, Ipaco, Arua, Papua, Yakuata, Yakuata, Baba. In the name of Jesus. I will not be far from God in the name of Jesus. I will not be far in the name of Jesus. I will not be far from God. I will not be far in the name of Jesus. My day by the proceed. In my life. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Let's have our seats. There's a need for us to do that prayer. 
because the cloud for that has been formed already by the Spirit of God, there's a need for us to press into it. I know some of you, as you are seated there, though you are quiet, but your spirit is praying. Can we maintain silence for two minutes? Don't pray with your mouth, pray in your spirit. Let that prayer going on in your spirit, let it continue. Let it continue. Shabbalatia. Pray in your spirit. You may not say anything. Don't say anything. Just pray in your spirit. Let your spirit pray. Let your spirit pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Your spirit must respond to this. Your spirit must respond to this. How can I sleep and you are bringing food for me? How will I eat it? When your spirit is active, The devil cannot bring just anything. How can you sleep and you're having sex in the dream? How? When your spirit is active. How will you even sleep with the girl? Or how will the boy come and sleep with you? There are people that when they sleep, a being will come and molest them, have sex with them, and when they wake from their sleep on their bed, they can feel naturally that somebody came to sleep with them. Naturally. How? When your spirit is alive. How? How can you be eating in the dream consistently? How? 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 In Jesus' name we have prayed. Let me share this before I answer the remaining question. Our time is fast spent. I told you on the day when we were doing anniversary. Amen. The two year anniversary. That night... I had a revelation. And I, I found myself in a junction and I saw a man. I was very close to the man. The man said, now, he's here. He said, as I shoot, he said it in Yoruba very angrily. He said, he said, he said, he said, I said, I will not deceive you. I was scared because I was close to the man. And he made those utterances and he released the bullet. He was shooting without stop. I saw the bullet. The only thing I knew was that I saw the bullet. And I was shielded by the Spirit of God. I did not see what shielded me, but I saw the bullet coming out, but it was not touching me. But I was still somehow scared. So I was running. I, I was moving fast to move away. I discovered that at every junction there were people waiting for me there with their guns. So when I get to this junction, another person is shooting. He must not live. He, will, he must die. If I get to this junction, so I, I got to about four or five junctions. People were wait, waiting for me, harmed to the teeth. And they were shooting at me at every junction. If I had slept and I died now, they'll say, where is the death of the righteous? God came to take him from sleep. What have I done now that God is taking me? What have I how many impact have I made for crying out loud? I get around say, how many impact have I made? Shooting the bullet that was shot at me without exaggeration, if we should count without exaggerating, it should be more than 100 bullets. Because it's not that. that it is it's just going like that. And I don't know what I did. I don't know. You don't need to see. Let your spirit be educated. Let your spirit be quickened. That's all. Even when you are sleeping, you are saved. Are you getting what I'm saying? I saw the bullet come out. It could not penetrate into my body. Some people ate in their dream. And that was the beginning of fibroid in their stomach. The day they ate that food was the day they began to feel a pain in their stomach until now. They are still suffering from it. Praise the Lord. I will not be far from the altar. In the name of Jesus. Yes, let's take any other question. Yes, do we have questions? Yes, please. Yes. At the fall of man, at the fall of man, the deformity that man has can now make him subject to sin. Is it in the spirit or in the soul? Please come again. The deformity of man, when man yes. 
the part of him that was actually affected, they are now making him turn down. Is there actually a for his soul? Okay, what part of him was affected by eating that fruit? Thank you. Praise the Lord. When Adam ate the fruit, his spirit was corrupted. And the corruption that took place in his spirit now brought the spirit to a point where the spirit is now inactive. That's why the Bible says, if the same spirit that brought forth Jesus from the dead lives in you, it will quicken. So your spirit now will now need what? Quickening. Because it is in a state of maybe chromatose or something. It's inactive. It has been corrupted. That's why salvation is first to save your spirit. I get what I'm saying. Because by eating that fruit in the garden, the spirit of man was what? Corrupted. So, and when I say the spirit is corrupted, it means that the flesh now will dominate the spirit. So that's why Paul said, there are many things I want to do, but I cannot do them. Because I find a law in my body. Warning against the law of Christ. That's a corrupted spirit. The flesh will dominate. Are you with me? Any other question? Okay. Is salvation a choice? Is salvation a choice? To man? Praise the Lord. What you are saying is, does it mean you can choose to be saved and you can choose not to be saved? Is that what you are saying? Praise the Lord. Salvation is a free gift from God. It came by grace. Are you there? But to man is a choice. Because you can choose not to be saved. And this choice can be indirectly. Because as long as you have decided not to believe in the one that came to die, the one that came to pay the price, you will not come into salvation. Are you with me? Have you met some preachers before we come and say, okay, now you want to give your life to Christ, now begin to confess your sins. Have you heard something like that? Confess your sins. Confess. Have you heard of it? Confess your sins. Confession of sin does not bring you to salvation. What brings you to salvation is confession of Christ. You confess that you believe. Confess that those things you did on the cross is for you. If you say confess your sins, can you remember all the things you have been singing to you started this same thing? In 1902. Why are you starting what you know you've not finished? So you now confess to you now. You, you think you have confessed God. It is your confession of Christ that what brings you into salvation. Are you getting So am I saying there's no need for restitution? As the Spirit leads you. Are you getting what I'm saying? There's a time we confess our sins to one another. Are you there? So that they can pray for us, they can counsel us. But I'm saying when it has to do with coming into salvation, it is what? Confession of Christ that brings you to salvation. Because what you confess is magnified. What you confess is what? If I confess sin, sin is magnified. If I confess Christ, Christ is magnified. And the one that is magnified is empowered over the one making the confession. So I will confess Christ so that Christ can be magnified. And when he's magnified, he is what? Eh? He becomes empowered. Are you there? I become subject. The one making the confession is subject to the one that is magnified in the confession. Are you there? The one making the confession is subject to the one that is what? Magnified through the confession. That's why I will confess Christ so that Christ can be what? Magnified. And when it's magnified, I'm what? Subject. I'm not subject to sin. I'm subject to what? Next question. Salvation. Okay, so we have known that salvation is a choice. But it, now that choice, is it made, who is it made by? Because now the spirit is now in a is in a corrupt state when uh, outside salvation. So and that corrupt state will actually not want salvation. So who will receive the salvation in me? Is it the spirit or the soul? Praise the Lord. The part of it that will receive the salvation is your spirit. That's why you see, there's no man that can bring any man to Christ. Your duty as a Christian is to say, it is the Holy Spirit that does the conviction. Where does it give that conviction from? He, 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 he does that to me from the spirit. 
So it is the Holy Spirit that now ministers to the, the dead spirit. The moment that the spirit, you may not even be there. You are already gone. Now the man is lying on the bed. And you made a statement. I said, whoever has not known Christ will not reign with Christ. You are already left. Even you went home and hurt your man and you slept. But the man on his bed, whoever does not know Christ will not reign with Christ. That means you not to bed. And the Lord will now use that, that statement as a, lay, as a ladder to enter into the Spirit of God will now quicken the Spirit of that Suddenly, a light will come, and you will see a reason to change. That's how it works. It's not to you. So don't come and say, I was able to save two people. How? How did you do it? Because that thing you are doing, saying is a lie. No man can change any man. If by the Spirit of God, I have ministered to you and you are now following God, it will mean that when I said what I have left to say, the spirit that gave me that altar is now taking place for you. After I am done with my own If the spirit that gave me the altar did not come to you, you cannot be So it is not in the hand of any man to transform another man. Are you there? Let's go. It's like this brother has a bank of questions. May the Lord help us today. Say amen. Yes. I've been thinking on this particular question. Be fast about it. Okay. So a child that is a dead. Yes. A child that is dead. Okay. Yes. Yes. Is it? I was not thinking that. Is this child going to win with Christ? Because. You can't really say this child committed any sin. But all the same, he was born and you can't really say he has come into Christ, he has given his life to Christ. So it's like this person is looking innocent and all that. But will he go to hell because he has not confessed to God? So I can't understand, I really don't understand. All right, praise the Lord. You just give birth to a child and then somebody gave birth to a child and after maybe a day or a week or something. The child died. Where is the child going to? Is it going to heaven or hell? Everyone that is born of a woman is born with the Adamic nature. Please don't mistake this thing. When I say those who are pregnant should bring the, the baby to the altar, are you there? What bringing the, that, that pregnancy to the altar does is that, are you with me? Because the Pregnancy was brought to the altar consistently. When it doesn't mean the baby, when he's born, will not be Adamic. It will be Adamic. But because of the sacrifices on the altar, the baby will quickly experience a rebirth. Except a man be born again. Have you not heard the testimony of people who gave their life to Christ at the age of seven? And they were consistent with the Lord. Something happened somewhere. It's not magical. Are you there? So, the decision of who goes to hell, this is what God taught me personally. The Lord said to me some years ago, He said, the decision of who goes to hell is not given to any man to make. He said, leave it for me to decide. That's what the Lord told me. So I will never come to him and say, this person will go to hell. I won't do that. So that's what God told me. So that decision is what? Left for God. But from what we know, we know that everyone that is born is born into the Adamic nature. And except a man be born again, he cannot see. The kingdom you don't see, you can't enter. It is first seen before entering. Are you there? Next question. Yes, please, that's very fast. Okay, yes, Moses. Okay. Praise the Lord. Moses, God himself, giving testimony about Moses, he said, there's no man, there's no prophet that I speak to like Moses. The one I speak to what? Face. To what? That was what God himself said about Moses. Are you there? So did Moses see God? Now the question we need to ask is, is it possible for a man to see God? Huh? Now there are two, two parties are here now. Some people are saying no. Some people are saying Yes. Okay, I don't believe it's not possible for a man to see God. Raise your hand like this. 
Even those that said no now are not raising their hands. That's the complications of life. Now they belong to no party. They are neutral. Without faith, it will be impossible to what? Another word for please is see. Without faith, it will be impossible to what? To see God. So with faith, uh-huh, you can see God. That's not all. I will give you another proof. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall what? See God. Seeing God now has to do with the dimension he decides to reveal to you. By the virtue of the knowledge you have gathered from the Lord now, have you not seen God? You have seen him, but through his what? His word. When you are reading the Bible and you saw light, ah, this is a mystery. I don't know it's like this before. You have seen God. Are you there? So it is possible to see God. But the way it makes you see him is in dimension. So Moses saw God. Based on the dimension. Anytime a dimension of God is revealed to you, you have what? Even if what you saw is his hand, you have seen him. Every part of God is God. If you see his finger, you have seen God. Are you getting what I'm saying? But well, you can't say you have seen me now because it's not my finger. <laughs> That's why God is different from man. Are you there? Every part of, even if you saw, if you see his shadow, you have what? There was a part, time Moses wanted to see God. And God passed before the rock and covered his face. All he saw was what? Shadow. And when God came, he said, no man is like this man. The one I spoke to face to face. So that means the face of God that God was referring to is in that shadow that Moses saw. So if you see the shadow of God, you have seen God. If you see his hand, you have seen this. Eh? Face God. Next question. Yes, there's a question there. Okay, you see our questions? Okay, please go ahead. Yes. Yes. No one has seen God at any time. Yes. Even me, I believe that it's possible that Adam is Yes. I believe it's from Jesus. Yes. According to this John chapter 1, verse 2. Yes, read, read. Yes. Is that all that is there? Is that all that is in there? Continue. The only begotten Son, who is the bottom of the Father, yes. he has what? Is that all in that verse 18? Okay, read 17. Fast. Okay, now read verse 18. No one has seen God at any time. No man has seen God at any time. Yes. The only begotten Yes. Who is the bosom? Yes. The yes. The Who is the what? Bosom. Bosom. Is that what is in your Bible? Okay. Of the is it bosom or beloved? Huh? Uh, okay. Continue. Continue. No one has seen God. Yes. At any time. time. Yes. Period. The only begotten Son. Who is the bosom of the Father? Yes. He has declared. He has what? Declared him. Go to nineteen. Now, this is the testimony of John. Yes. Now, look at this. Thank you. Please sit. No man at what? Seeing God at what? At any time. He now went for that to now begin to describe Jesus. Are you there? What the Bible is saying there is not that you have not seen him. What the Bible is trying to say is no man in any generation had ever seen God this closely than now. Because now the God that is far is now in your midst. You can't even bring him to your house and eat together. Are you there? The only time when God was seen more closely in history was when Jesus came. Are you getting what I'm saying? That was what this verse is trying to say, that nobody has ever seen God this... God has never been this open before in history. Because the Jesus they saw was who? The God they were preaching about. I and my father. We are what? Why? Are you getting what I'm saying? This is the problem. If you don't see God, your eyes will be darkened. And if you remain in darkness, you're finished. Any other question? Okay, please. Okay. 
Please, let's take just two questions because of time. Yes. Engineer, please, Mike. Hallelujah. You are single. Yes. That seek your faith. Praise the Lord. Seeking the face of God is you seeking to know more of Him. Are you there? You want to have more revelation of Him. Are you there? But every part of God that you see is God that you are seeing. For example, the president can send money to a particular place. Maybe he sends 20, maybe 50 million naira to a particular place. He may not go there. And after sending the money, he will go to his house. The people in his house, have they seen him? Huh? Huh? Those people he sent money to, did they also see him? If you see what he is doing, you have seen him. Seeing him now is dimensional. Even if I did not come and I send money to you, that thing that I'm sending to you is me being represented in your territory. Are you getting what I'm saying? But in the face of God, there's, there's, more, there's more advantage in seeing His face. Are you there? Because when you see the face, you can see it more clearly. You have more illumination, you have more light. You can come into understanding. Are you getting what I'm saying? Thank you. Yes? Last question. Two questions. Can we merge it into one? Okay. All right. What does it mean to be a child? Jesus said the kingdom of heaven belongs to children. You have to be like children to what? Make to inherit the kingdom. Yes, you have to be a child. To be a child is to be submissive. To be a child is to be frank. Children are frank. Do you believe it? You can give them the scripture and say give them alone. They won't. <laughs> are you ever wondering? Did that? Give me one. You can see Papa and me. You are. You don't want to talk. But children can look at a general and say, I don't like you. <laughs> Meanwhile, you, you don't like the man who was there, that he, he talked about your life. <laughs> but a child will say, okay, leave me, I'm not playing with you. And when the man tries to... <laughs> Are you there? So that sincerity part of children is what God is pointing to. They are being frank. Are you there? Being humble, they are meek, they are easy, you can easily control them, they are controlling you. Are you there? Yes. Huh? Incarnation. In Yoruba, you will have called that Akudaya, right? Praise the Lord. Akudaya, right? Amen. Amen. The, that reality is only given to Jesus. And that person that forms it is not real. Oh, somebody's thinking of what of Samuel? What of Samuel? What of the picture of Samuel that came? It's not Samuel in this song. Are you there? That reality of coming back when you are dead to live among, to do something is given to only Jesus. If you see somebody that died in Shokoto and you see the person in Lagos. And now the person is wooing a sister. Just say yes to me. I will take care of you. And you too, you say, I've prayed. You know the way some sisters pray about things. I've prayed about it. And, and the Lord is giving me a go ahead. <laughs> to who? <laughs> that man you saw is not the man that died. It's the devil using the image of that man. Are you with me? The Bible says the sons of men came into the daughters of men. Are you there? The sons of God came to the daughters of men. In the book of Genesis, are you there? The question is, what face do they carry? Have you asked yourself that question before? And when they marry the daughters of men, wickedness increases. The question is, what face do they carry? They came with the faces of people who 
probably have died. That's showing you the mystery of this thing you call a Kudaya or something. It's not those people, it's the devil who using their vessel to do something on earth. So when those sons of God that came, they used the picture of people that were existing before but are dead. And they came with that picture to marry the daughters of them. So the Samuel that came from that sorcery spot is not Samuel. It's a strange spirit speaking with that image. Are you getting what I'm saying? If I say some, if I say this thing now, you may not even believe. Even the image is not the image of someone. King Saul, his heart was already polluted. So when your heart is polluted, something goes wrong with your vision. You cannot see clearly. Are you get what I'm saying? Don't worry, this one will lead us to another teaching. But what you must take note of is that reality is only given to who? Jesus. So if somebody dies and you see him in another place doing something, what, what are you seeing? A demon possessing what? That vessel to do something. Are you with me? Are we bless the Lord for this meeting? I say, Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Shabarando si kabrahada. Rembanendo si brahadi vababa.